Hey, what's going on there, you crazy animals? Welcome to another edition of Dead Air, and it's Scary Jersey Guy, and as always is with me my good buddy, Mr. Slayer. Yo, yo, yo. So yeah, today we're going to sit down and talk about Resident Evil Apocalypse, which is a direct sequel to the craptacular first entry for the horror game franchise, Resident Evil. And yeah, I don't know, Slayer, did you watch this one in theaters? Uh, Actually, I've only seen one of them in theaters, uh, so it wasn't this one. This one I absolutely saw in theaters. A friend of mine was like, yeah, I've got tickets. You want to go? And uh, yeah, I wasn't paying for it. So sure, why not? Same, but mine was uh, the fourth one. The um, Afterlife, the 3D one. Yeah, after a while, they just start taking on like generic names like Revenge, Revival, you know. But yeah, yeah. Uh, unlike the first one, this uh, wasn't directed by Paul Anderson. It was written by him. But it was directed by a guy named Alexander Witt, who apparently had a pretty extensive career. You know, it was mostly known as the second unit director. He worked on movies like Speed, Money Train, Twister, The X Files, Hannibal, Black Hawk Down, The Born Entry. A lot of movies here. And he's still getting work even today. So the guy definitely has a mokinum of talent, but he just doesn't have uh, much uh, credit as a full on director. In fact, Resident Evil was his directorial debut. But yeah, Paul Anderson's fingerprints were still all over this one. We'll get into that once we get into it. But essentially, yeah, yeah Apocalypse is a direct uh, sequel to the first movie. It takes place after the events of the first film, where Alice escapes from an underground facility. Raccoon City has now pretty much completely been taken over by zombies. But we still have a little bit of a ways to go before we get there. So what were your expectations going into this one? Well, if uh, if you go back in time to uh, when they were advertising it, mm-hmm. you know, they had a really cool commercial of uh, it was like a fake beauty project or whatever product or whatever. Yeah, like, some, like skin thing, and so the price that was pretty neat. But I still didn't see it in theaters. Uh, eventually, I think I got money from like a family member, and I was at the store, and I was like, I think that it was actually on set, like a sale or something. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll pick this up, and it was like another movie. And watched it, and then I was just like, I was like, huh, I don't know. I, I didn't really care for it back then, but you know, about almost twenty years later, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Well, yeah, we'll get to our thoughts at the end, because otherwise, what's the point of listening to this one? But yeah, basically, um, yeah, my thoughts going into this one was is that the first one, meh, but I remember seeing the trailers. I do remember the commercial thing. And I think I remember something where they sent something on their on on like your phone to you, where like you could take a picture of yourself and zombify it or something like that. But nobody had a phone that good that you could do it the way. I was they gonna say it. back in two thousand four. I mean, I I don't know. Yeah, like get your little flip phone out and like take your Game Boy Color like picture yourself. You already look like a zombie. Back then, you had to like upload the photo or something, or hook up like one of those digital cameras. Okay, we're really getting ourselves. Continue on. <laughs> but no, I, I actually, I, I had some pretty good hopes going into this one because it was advertised as taking place during the events of the second game and the third game, sort of, where you know the the outbreak has taken over Raccoon City completely. Obviously, Nemesis's story point as well. So it seemed to me like, hey, maybe they're going to start incorporating real stuff from the game. So you know, I, I I had high hopes going into it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, basically, uh, yeah, Resident Evil Apocalypse. Once again, it, it it pretty much takes off right after where the first one left off. We've got Alice waking up in an underground laboratory. You know, she's all alone. She's all by herself. Um, it kind of retcons the ending of the first one because the ending of the first one, she's already woken up, you know, she finds a shotgun and just like walks off into the sunset. This one, it seems like they're kind of doing the evil dead, evil dead two thing where they're kind of retelling history to suit the plot line. I remember they're showing her stuff with a shotgun and whatnot. I remember at the end the end of the first one, she gets a shotgun out of a police car and just like walks off in her hospital gown. I, I could have sworn they showed that in the second one though. It was like maybe it was during like the, the recap part like really quick. Uh, 
either way, they, they kind of do one of those little recap deals where it pretty much... I, I always hated when they do these recaps where they show you the events of the first movie before it to kind of bring you up to speed. Because at that point, what would be the point of suffering through the first one? You know? Yeah. So it, it pretty much gives you that whole recap of everything that happened in the original. And then it shows that, you know, they're they're taking Matt away. You know, they're they're putting Alice into the Alice project or whatever they want to call it. And they're reopening the hive, and they send a small group of guys down to the entrance. They open it up, and then they they kind of like to pull off an alien scene, you know, like the, like the motion trackers. Remember that? Yeah. So they're very quickly overrun, and then at that point now, Raccoon City's got to be quarantined, which this whole sequence is pretty weird to me, where they're going around in black SUVs, and they're finding all these high-ranking executives. Mm -hmm. and it's it's just this part it always makes me laugh because like they're treating this like this big like coordinated project and then they find dr ashford and it's like come on there's been a problem you got to come with us he's like what about my daughter you know and they're like oh we've already sent someone to get her and you see the kid getting up and leaving classroom like she's in trouble and then out of nowhere the city's completely deserted and her car gets hit by a dump truck of all things yeah and then just the other cars just drive off. Like, yeah, we lost contact with so-and-so. Uh, we're not going to go back for him. Let's just go. So uh, how, how do you think we're starting off? You think we're starting off on the right foot yet? I mean, yeah, it's, so far it's not, it's not a terrible start. Yeah, so pretty much after all this is done with, uh, I'd say, what, what do we got next now? We got Jill Valentine getting dressed. And there's tons of newspaper clippings that apparently she wanted to keep talking about how she's a disgraced cop that got fired or suspended or whatever. And then she That scene is awesome. <laughs> I know, but it's kind of like uh, would, would yeah. you want to would you want to keep like newspaper clippings of your disgrace? I mean it's kind of funny, you know, but yeah. But I don't know, but like me personally, I was happy just because it's like, yes, it's Jill Valentine. Now we're finally starting to show characters from the game, which is kind of what the first one was really, really, really missing. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that, that actress doesn't just play Jill. She she does the palm of the character. That was she... uh, Sienna uh, Gilroy. And God, yeah. she crushed it. She was so good as Jill. I I mean for real she 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 looked like Jill she had the attitude of Jill it it, it was pretty much like if you were gonna cast a movie you couldn't have got someone better like Sienna Gilroy as Jill to me is like um gee, Jesus Jean Luc Picard is Professor Xavier right like Patrick um, Patrick Stewart. I think she had somebody play the game so she could make sure she modeled the walk exactly as well. I can't argue with that. A little dedication to the craft there. Yeah, but she no, she was badass, especially even the way she like lights the cigarette with her with her uh, thumb and her finger. That was just I don't know, it was cool. Yeah, but what's even cooler is is it shows her going down to the police station and she goes in and it's like a carnival game where she just like goes in and blam, 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 takes out all the zombies. I mean, it it, it kind of made everyone else in the city look completely inept. Just because, like, they're trying to arrest the zombies that are trying to bite you. You know, but she knows what to do. She just goes in and starts blasting them in the head. Yeah. Uh, well, there's one thing I'll say about the movie, though. I think, for the most part, all the characters are pretty enjoyable that we meet, you know, later on in the, the movie. Yeah, so far, so good. And this, is, of course, is where Miss Alice decides to awaken in the hospital, and that's when... You know, she wanders out of the hospital and she comes across, oh, Jesus, a military surplus store with a motorcycle parked out in front of it. And I mean, there's already stuff saying that like the dead walk and the city's infected with zombies. And, you know, nobody's decided to go to the gun shop except for her. So she just stocks up and dresses however she wants and takes whatever she feels like. <laughs> and then she's on her way. Yeah. And we flash forward to a nighttime scene 
where Umbrella has completely erected a huge wall around Raccoon City, like Escape from New York. And I don't know how the fuck they managed to pull this one off in what, like a day? I mean, I, was the walls like, I don't know, like I always kind of figure for some reason, like maybe the walls were like always there or something. <laughs> no, they, they, they showed up. Yeah. We, we've managed to erect a perimeter, <laughs> one of those deals. You know, and and of course, there's one way in, one way out. At uh, I think they call it the Raven Bridge, and they're doing that little thing where it's like everybody's there and they're trying to scan people one at a time, and it's it, you know it's it's pretty typical where they're scanning people until one guy falls over. The kid's like, no, it's my dad. He's just having I don't know like a major heart attack or something. You know, and then he winds up biting Jill's partner, who's um, an original character who happens to be a member of Stars as well. Uh, Peyton, I think his name was. Uh, and at that point, you know, once Peyton gets bit, they shut everything down. You know, they threaten to start shooting the civilians at the bridge if they don't leave. It's pretty much, fuck you, you're on your own. And at that point, we're also introduced to another new character who uh, uh, started off in Resident Evil 3, Carlos Oliveira, who was played by, oh, I can never pronounce this guy's name, Oded Fair, who was <laughs> Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Women pay me to give them pleasure. And I didn't even know that it was him. I, I didn't know you just said just now that it just finally clicked in my head because uh, I don't look up his... his acting credit so I was like wait oh, you're right I'm like oh shit no it is and he uh, was he was also in you know the mummy and the mummy returns very good actor yeah but it was just like you take off the goatee and you take off the uh the long hair and I was just like there's no way that that's a guy from Deuce Bigelow uh, his okay his intro scene I gotta say it was with that ass jumping out of the helicopter with the guns and he does a little uh, mission impossible thing where they barely <laughs> just stop him I mean, I, I think for the most part, I enjoyed the action scenes of this. There, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, most of them. The action know. scenes, I got to say, were really really good. And there's Carlos, yeah. and there's also uh, Nikolai Gian, uh, Ginevev, I think is how you pronounce his name. I could never get that right. guy's name right either. But that guy played was played by, by... Hey, Zach Ward. Yeah. Yeah, Scott Farkas. Because they filmed some of this movie, I believe, in somewhere in Canada. This is all filmed in Canada, as far as I know. But yeah, it was a little silly. It was a little over the top. You know, it's like we're flying along in a helicopter. We're mm -hmm. going to just stop what we're doing and because we see this one lone person on the roof. And it, like I said, it, it was a little over the top, but it was entertaining, and I thought it was really good. And so far, in general, you know, the movie's got pretty much, yeah, it's over the top, but it's good. So, I mean, in a sense, it... You know, it's giving me like '80s action vibes, where like Commando was over the top, but it was good. You know, yeah, I will say that the the shaky, blurry cam they used for some of the zombie scenes, I did not care for. Oh, uh, Very... I know exactly what scene you're talking about. It's that one hallway thing where it was just like, why? What was the point of that? I feel like it was kind. Of, well, they did in the graveyard scene as well. I feel like it was a weird trend that they had for a while that died out. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe they're trying to be very like I don't know MTV kind of cool ridiculousness, but it was just like no, stop. Uh, I, I I don't know about you, but that whole thing just looked like shit. Yeah, that that scene in the graveyard scene, the only two scenes that really upset me. The graveyard scene for different reasons, but we'll get to that soon. Yeah. So at this point, uh, you know, the, the city's gone to hell. I'm liking the whole RPD and the Umbrella UB uh, CS crew. They're going up against the zombies. The action is all really, really, really good. And then here's where things start getting broken off and we have different groups. Like we've got Jill and Peyton. We got this newspaper reporter with a video camera who wants to get her Emmy, you know, which is like, ugh. You know, it's so cliche, but they're going off to a church, which uh, the church scene I thought was interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I love the, the tension building and stuff, seeing like Jill walk down. Like, you know, yeah, the e e everything stuff. about this was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. 
it was kind of weird seeing you know jill go into the back and find the priest he's feeding dead bodies to his sister yeah i mean they done several other zombie things but it was but you know that's that, that that's yeah. kind of a there's always going to be like a cliche like that where you know well, maybe if i just feed him everything will be okay you know that, that that that's that, that's something that's been borrowed from a couple zombie flicks but i i really don't mind it it's a little strange but i don't mind it but here's where we get introduced to a liquor fight i think there was two liquors and it already wipes out one survivor and they're being hunted throughout the church and i'm i'm digging it already i'm loving it this is great so far yeah. and then here's where it all goes uh down the fucking toilet for me because at this point like jill's already been established as a badass and i'm loving it this is great and then of course you know dun 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 we've got alice riding through the stained glass window because i guess they had like a stunt ramp or something built outside that she could just go through so alice rides through on a motorcycle slides it on the ground kick flips it up into the air which smashes into one of the liquors and then she shoots it with umbrella brand nine millimeter bullets complete with the matrix slowdown effect and blows the whole goddamn thing up so i'm like okay well that's the end of uh you know jill's relevancy <laughs> and next we have the other liquor who gets trapped under the 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 cross of all things right so, and then the, the last one, she uh, shotgun fires in the head, and then blood hits Jill's shoes, and she's like, "Who the fuck are you?" And yeah, like, the, yeah, that's what we're all thinking. The, yeah, exactly. That's what we're all thinking. It's like, "Who the fuck are you, and why are you here?" Well, you know, Alice is like, if if this was a video game, she'd be that game. She'd be something created by a game shark using a bunch of cheats, just running around the game doing ridiculous shit. Yeah, I know. She's uh, like, she, she's like fucking Neo. You know, always has to be the center of attention, you know, and if I just sit here and I bitch about it, oh, you know, we'll be here all night. So we'll, we'll just move on. We'll give our thoughts. Uh, I'm going to get my thoughts on her bullshit later. So at this point, you know, once again, we're doing the whole group to group to group to group thing. I guess Alice is now part of the group now and phones start going off left and right, which is kind of funny. I like this. You know, and Alice finally picks up the phone and speaks with Dr. Ashford, who hacks into pretty much the entire city's grid using an outside line. I mean, like, I always love the whole concept of war games where you have, like, something that's, like, barely powerful enough to run Microsoft Word and you're able to hack into NORAD. <laughs> you know, so here's Dr. Ashford just, like, taking over. He, he can hack into all the CCTV feeds in town find anybody see anybody call any phone he wants to so the whole thing is is he strikes a deal basically saying yeah you know what you're all trapped they're gonna blow the town up but if you get my daughter i'll get you out of there you know yeah. of, of course we got to trust into this guy <laughs> so <laughs> this pretty much leads us to the school which uh the the, the school was an interesting sequence but I, I, I don't know, Slay. You take this one away. Describe this one for the fo for the people. Well, it's no the school thing. I mean, it was all right though. Though you forgot the scene before that, which was the graveyard scene. Though. Oh no, we're gonna get to the graveyard scene in a minute. Oh, okay. But we want to talk about the school. I mean, it does end up being a ridiculous scene. Well, okay, Jill gets time to shine, and you know, and. She has the idea to turn on the gas stove and like rush out with the little girl and like she throws her cigarette behind her. No, her the mat behind her, but it doesn't work. But then Alice is just waiting there. Yeah, with a the cigarette. cigarette and flicks it. Which the signal is both kind of cool but annoying. It's like, what? I think she had, grabs a flame blank like retardant blanket, yep. wraps around her, so the explosion goes off. It's just like, uh like she hasn't seen I, anything that's going on in this whole thing. Because uh, at this point, I mean, just to break it down, we've got the zombie dogs. Her they, heightened sense of smell can smell the gas. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> they did a really good job of setting up the expectation, though. I got to give them credit here. Where you see the scene with the police truck flipped over, and it's the canine unit, and all the cages are broken out. I'm like, oh. ah, okay, there's dogs in there. And you know what? I didn't mind that. 
But it was the fact that, once again, we've got this shit where, you know, like the reporter gets eaten alive by a mob of grudge kids. Yeah, I mean, the scene started out, you know, it wasn't bad. Uh, it's up the end part was a little bit, you know. It, it was right until we see old yeah. Alice. Yeah, I, like, like, how does she know to, like, drive into the church that they were in there? And then, like, yeah, then how does she know to wait there, like... Was she supposed to just be randomly smoking a cigarette? And then it was like, oh, I saw your match went out. Or, or did she have like a psychic connection with her, telepathic? Or I don't know. I'm thinking way too hard about this. Video. I don't know. Paul, Paul Anderson's got a great way of writing his wife into everything. Because, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. And she, You know what it's kind of like? It's like watching Friday the 13th Part 8, like, like Jason takes Manhattan. And you're like, <laughs> wait, does Jason teleport now? <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you know so in between all this nonsense um the head asshole in charge i can't remember the guy's name do you like that jill and uh alice kind of they aren't super friendly to each other they kind of have a little bit of a annoyance rivalry with each other it, yeah which kind of came out of nowhere there's no need for it they don't know each other they don't it, it's like why well, jill are... knows she knows what's happening she's being upstaged <laughs> Yeah, because you know what? In all honesty, most of this stuff is what Jill should have been doing. Yeah, she when Alex shows up is when she kind of takes the back seat and doesn't really do much after that. Yeah, like the, the 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 it's like Jill's badass factor goes from like ten to yeah. Now I'm here in the background, you know, and that's really it. Now, uh, the the one head asshole in charge who pretty much just looks like you know Rolf from The Sound of Music. <laughs> that's the best way I can describe that schmuck. He decides that it's a perfect time to let loose Nemesis, which is like Umbrella's latest shiny toy, which essentially right. was, you know, like the third, uh, like like the whole selling point behind the third Resident Evil game. Because you're playing Jill, you're, you're running through Raccoon City, and you're getting chased around by Nemesis, who's hunting all the stars members. So, you know, we, we, we've, we oh yeah, we, we kind of left out a, a, another important character, I suppose, is Mike Epps. Who just kind of managed to like hang out in the background all this time, and then you know he he's in the police station. He's chained to a couple of uh, streetwalkers, I guess is the appropriate term to call them. Yeah. That are zombified. Jill blasts him loose. He runs <laughs> off. We don't see him for a bit, and then he's just like kind of wandering through the city with a stolen car. They give a Grand Theft Auto joke because he runs over a zombie. He gets distracted by zombie strippers. Yeah. Or I guess they're, they're like zombie SWers, I guess is the the, the, the proper terminology. <laughs> but yeah, he, he gets distracted by them, crashes, and then we get introduced to probably one of my favorite characters in the movie, the cowboy sniper from the Stars team. Right. You know, he's just like blast a zombie that's right behind Mike Apps' set. And he's like, hey, thanks a lot, brother. He's like, yeah, I got the power. But, you know, he's just like sitting back. He's got his headphones on, sipping a beer, just blasting whatever's in sight while the rest of the stars team, what's left of them, there's like, it, it's like 30 of them, which is, is weird to me because it was, you know, like if you were going to connect the games, there was only like 12 of them and pretty much like 90% of them are dead at this point. But, you know, it's whatever. Mike Epps gets stuck in there. We see Nemesis walking along, and he's got a minigun, and he's got a rocket launcher. And I, kind of I, I I don't know what to say about this one because it was one of those, like, really annoying setup sequences. Like, the guy was sounding like he was trying to fucking promote a UFC fight. He's like, they're stars. They're the best of the best, tactically trained. And here's Nemesis, you know? And it's just like... They shoot at him. It's like the sequence in Terminator 2 when the SWAT team was blasting open Arnold. And then it's like, okay, target the stars. So he fires the minigun and he wipes out 30 people and leaves Mike Epps, who uh, was holding two golden Desert Eagle pistols. And then he just looks at him. He's like, yeah, he's no threat and walks away. Yeah, we also dropped him, but you are really wrong. So it's like, okay, we're, we're okay. We're, I guess we're going to try to inject a little bit of humor into this one. Yeah. So what? yeah, now th then we've got a scene that I'm sure you're going to rant about is uh, the graveyard sequence. Well, it's not. It's 
Yeah, the graveyard sequence and the sequence where um, the scientist guy comes back as a zombie because he just dies, comes back. Yeah. So yeah, it's like it's like they 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 dipped <laughs> their Resident Evil in Romero, which <laughs> I mean I know they're inspired off each other, but this is <laughs> like no. So yeah, they're in the graveyard. The zombies come alive. They come out of the graves. It's like the virus isn't airborne this doesn't make any sense hey, see, i wouldn't say they dipped it into romero i'd say they dipped it into return of the living dead like didn't it rain <laughs> i think it did <laughs> rain no it didn't but i mean there's the awful return of the dead four which dips its dips itself into resident evil but uh, uh, anyways but but still it's the whole thing we're like mm, what, what i think yeah. is is that it rained and the rainwater goes into the ground and reanimates all these fucking zombies which once again we have another sequence where you know like jill has gone from being this zombie sl- like slaying badass to well alice is just gonna do like kung fu shit exactly like um well uh, she has a few scenes where she snaps the zombie's neck and stuff oh wow you know, meanwhile, <laughs> you know, fucking Neoette is like doing backflips and, you know, crushing their legs and you're like flicking them you in the see forehead. What's going the on because the camera is just shaking and it's like you added the blur effect to like a PS2 game that couldn't keep up the frame rate. Oh, like, the Whoa. old Batman Begins <laughs> thing where the action has like 17 different cuts and makes it all chaotic. I love that shit. Not really. Ugh. Yeah. So at, at this point, it's like the movie's definitely starting to shit the bed for me because there, there's just too much going on. They tried combining the storyline from Resident Evil 2, the game, and Resident Evil 3, Nemesis, the game, into one flick. And this is something that I've always said will kill any movie that's based off an intellectual property. It did not work with Queen of the Damned, and nobody has still quite figured out yet that it's a bad idea. To do that sort of shit. Yeah. Just, I. They also just amped it up into an action movie. (laughs) Yeah, but you know what the thing is? Is like, there's a difference between doing an action movie and this is just getting kind of ridiculous. Yeah. All right. So the whole thing that this, that this movie is centered around, it's not even about escaping anymore it's about finding angela who's dr ashford's daughter who apparently had some grave illness and dr ashford found a way to give her the t virus to keep her alive without turning her into a zombie so periodically she has to like regularly inject herself with the t virus but then she also takes the antivirus to stop herself from turning into a zombie so, of course, they snatched that, and, you know, like, Carlos got bit, if I remember correctly. They give him that, and that fixes him right up. And then poor Nikolai, I, you know what, and for someone like uh, Scott Farkas, this is, like, the perfect way to kill him off, too. Like, it's sad, you know, like, he, like he, he saves him. It's like, who are you? I am Nikolai. And then he just gets attacked, yeah. and he's done. Yeah. It it, it, it kind of sucked because, you know, I like the character and I like Zach Ward. It's just, it was a very Titus thing, if anybody remembers that TV show. Oh, uh, yes. That's where I first saw him, yes. And what I can't remember what I saw him in after, but I was like, hey, it's the guy from uh, Titus. Titus. Freddy versus Jason or was it something else first? He I was in Freddy versus Jason as well. He was the older brother. Uva Balls, Postal, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's been every, everywhere. Yeah, Zach Ward is pretty awesome. You know, so at this point now, they've rescued the daughter, they've evacuated the school, they've blown everything up. Nemesis is, like, here sometimes. Nemesis is there sometimes. And then we find out that there's a helicopter just sitting on the city center. Like, like yeah, go to there. We'll, we'll, we'll get you out of there. Sure. And then at this point, it's just... Woo. Here's where we have a big one-on-one fight between Alice and Nemesis. A fist fight. Yeah, a fist fight. You know, drop your guns, let's duke it out. It's not even cool like in Predator either. And I I, I hate to have to constantly, 
reference other movies, but that's exactly what it seems like. It seems like they got all the ideas from other movies that were way better than this one. At this that's point. what Paul W.S. Anderson does. In all his movies, he just writes things he likes in other movies and puts them in there. But it's not even to a level of homage. It's almost ripping, it's practically ripping off. It, uh, it, it's, it, 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 it's just pretty much... You know, it's like this game makes a dialogue in the original Resident Evil look like fucking Tarantino. <laughs> and if you're in the now, you'll understand yeah. what I mean by that reference. Yeah. But anywho, they have the one-on-one -on -one fight. Alice realizes that this is Matt from the first movie, and he's been mutated into this monster. And then Nemesis gets his humanity back. Nemesis <laughs> and his puppy, his puppy dog eye. Uh, and he winds up taking that umbrella with what's left of, you know, his minigun bullets. He gets impaled by a helicopter. And then, you know, uh, Rolf from Sound of Music, I can't remember that jerk off's name. You know, he kills um, the doctor. And then he winds up getting his legs broken, which is kind of like Jurassic Park. You see what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 and then the doctor just comes to life. He doesn't get that by a zombie. He just comes back as a zombie. It's like, hey, at least he didn't get uh, up and walk. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been, like, been like that Simpsons episode uh, when, when, like, they were talking about how in like plays they're dead last, and he got <laughs> he got Krusty the Clown as FDR, and he's like, <laughs> Eleanor, we got to do something about this war. <laughs> oh, that's right, I'm crippled, and he gets back oh, yeah. into the wheelchair. <laughs> Like that would have um, at least, that that would have at least like added like a little bit of shine to that scene. You know, we forgot but, the scene where Alice like instead of repelling, she like runs down the side of the building. Oh, I didn't forget about it. I just didn't want to talk about it because it was so goddamn terrible. I mean, I do appreciate they had a stunt woman actually do it, and then Mila did like so many feet down the ground for the rest of it. What three? Uh, no, no. Uh, the running down the building scene. They actually. I guess that woman to actually run down the side of the building, you know, and then uh, and then through like the X amount of feet to the, you know, the rest of it they had Mila do, but yeah, uh, but still silly as hell though. Well, like she's like the hedgehogging down the building. What? It, it, well, you know, as far as the stunt work goes, we'll talk about that after this is done because something happened on this one that really kind of upset me. So. <sighs> The, the doctor's dead, the, the umbrella guy is dead, Nemesis is dead, everybody's dead, you know, except for the people on the helicopter. They get up and fly the helicopter off, but a nuclear blast knocks it out of the sky. And then, of course, we find, you know, everybody, like, covering it up on the news, saying it was like a terrorist act. So everybody's looking for Jill, everybody's looking for Carlos. I think people are even looking for Angela as well. I don't know why you would expect like a twelve year old of blowing up a nuclear power plant, but sure, you know. Kids. Personally, I think it was the nuclear power plant that Jennings went into from Howard the Duck. But you know, uh, at, at this point, we've got Alice waking up naked in a test tube. She's back in Umbrella's grasp again, so she wakes up. And now she's got psychic powers. She's able to make people bleed out of their eyeballs, like uh, scanners. Jesus Christ, I can't help it but just keep referencing other movies that were better than this one. I'm not doing this on purpose. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just sad. You know, so she walks outside. Umbrella's got like a thousand guns pointed on her. The doctor, who got his face broken earlier, wakes up and says, oh yeah, let him go. It's all part of our plan. Activate Alice Project or some shit. And then the Umbrella logo goes off in her face. And, and then, mm -hmm. yeah, the, now we go to the credits. So, yeah. boy, uh, Raccoon City, uh, not not Raccoon City, but Apocalypse. Uh, th th this is pretty much, wow. So so what did we think about this one, Mr. Slayer? I did the first one named Bland. And, uh, I mean, for the most part, I actually enjoyed Apocalypse, but it is like a ridiculous action horror movie thing. There's that, that, that I definitely had problems with it, but I think when I was watching it, I was just like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just give this a rewatch. And I don't, I, I had fun with it, definitely isn't perfect. I don't know how the rest of these are gonna go, but 
no, there was enough no entertainment value where I guess if got nothing better going on, you could watch with some friends and be okay with it. It, it won't bore you like the the first one. I, but I, I can at yeah. least agree with that one. Yeah. So, uh, your final thought is: is would you recommend this? Would you not recommend it? Yeah, you know, actually, I, I would. I would recommend. It. I think there's enough Easter eggs and stuff that are worth checking out. Well, Alice no. isn't quite ridiculous as she gets later on, but she's pretty ridiculous. But I think I like the cat. I like the characters of the movie. Even Mike Epps was fine. Like I think, I overall the the, the group of characters were. A lot of fun to watch. I enjoyed watching them all, seeing what happened, and that's one thing I'll give the movie credit for. They just they did the, the, the camaraderie thing better than I remember. I, Alice does have a lot of her moments, but I still feel like there was a good focus on the characters, and it was it was a fun enough movie. Problems aside, okay. Well, Apocalypse for me, basically, um, I enjoyed this a lot better than I enjoyed the first one. I can tell you that much. Um, the things that I thought were really good about it was I did enjoy the set pieces. I thought some of the, you know, like the portrayal of Raccoon City. That's the sort of stuff that really got me excited. Because, like I said, when I first saw the, you know, saw the trailers, I had way higher hopes because... Hey, we've got Jill, we've got Stars, we've got Nemesis. So we're going to start pulling in stuff from the games, add a little bit of familiarity to it. And I didn't even mind that they created some original characters that we never heard of because they really weren't very bad. But the problem is Alice. Yeah. As soon as she hits the scene, the movie just takes a fucking dive for me. And the reason why is because, once again, she has to take center stage here. And it's in such an over-the-top, in-your-face, unnecessary way. I mean, riding a motorcycle through a a stained glass window, kick-flipping it into a monster, and then blowing it up. Who would write that shit? Even Arnold wouldn't do that. It would have been it would have made more sense if she would have like rode it through the doors, then like kind of like slid off it, had it slide, hit the monster, and then shoot it or whatever. Oh no, we had we had to make like the grandest yeah. entrance possible. You know, and it's just it's another thing that centered around making her look as badass as possible and making everybody else look as meaningless as possible. Because I mean, look at how awesome Jill started off at, and then she just became a side character. Mm. You know, it's just everything's about Alice. You know, we we, we got to get a sound clip of Robert from Everybody Loves Raymond. Everybody loves Alice. Uh, you know? And it's just yeah. if, if they could re-release this movie without her in it, like 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 cut all of her scenes out, this movie would be a lot better. Okay. Yeah. Or if they rewrote it to where like. Alice and Jill actually team up and work as a team, which I'll find more, a little more teamwork. Not make her superwoman. Well, yeah, just just pushing everybody into the back, I thought was kind of bleh. But I mean, the a lot of the action sequences I enjoyed. I love the shootout between stars and you know the umbrella team and the zombies. I thought that was great. Like when you see stuff like that. There, there's a lot of good action and it looks great and the movie is competently shot i can definitely say that was an advantage over the first one where paul anderson's it was kind of all over the place and we had to deal with those stupid angles and all that this one i mean aside from the slow motion blurry thing which i thought is really weird and totally unnecessary like this it just it looked a lot better and you know stuff was lit well stuff was edited well stuff was paced well the dialogue wasn't too terrible it just in general this was definitely an improvement over the original which you know that's not really something you want to hang your hat on is that this is so much better than like a a terrible thing but I, i i don't know at the end of the day i definitely recommend it but like I said, if if there's a version without Alice in it, I'd I I'd say that this would probably be a way better movie. I think yeah, I think I think if you 
you just want to watch, you know, yeah, a big kind of goofy hard action movie with a few friends. You know, no, yeah, it's 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 fine. But yeah, I'm not saying the problems you're discussing isn't great. It is what it is. It's you know, Alice is in a movie and stuff, but but as it stands is a movie about twenty years old now. It's yeah, it's fine. There's enough cheeky references and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it wasn't bland. Could have been obviously it could have been better. Mm-hmm. But it also could be worse. And we still got more of these to watch, so yeah, we got plenty more of them to watch. So, I mean, pretty much like I'd say the after effects of this was is, you know, I I, I hate how it's it, it kind of feels like an ego thing. Just, you know, oh, look, I make my wife badass because she blows me. That's pretty much it. She blows shit up and then she blows me. Yeah, oh. pretty much. It's just, yeah, that, 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 that was the only thing I didn't, really, uh, I, I didn't really care for was they just had to have Alice center stage. Because you had all these other really, really good characters who just all took a back seat to her for no reason whatsoever. You know, but still, I would recommend it just because, you know, if you're a fan of like the franchise, hey, this is a chance to see the city. This is a chance to see Nemesis, which, God, I was looking at photos of him recently and I'm like, God, he looks like something from the Beast Within. You know, it's just. Oh boy! So we've got the third one coming up out of this bunch. Oh, the Mad Max one, yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe this will actually advance beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> All right. So your experience is like um in the audience. Does this give you high hopes that the third one's going to be better? Oh man. Ooh. I watched it. I watched the one once, and I think I just remember being like, "eh," and so, but I don't remember much about it. So we'll, we'll see. Um, but again, I I hated this one, and I walked away from this one being like, "eh, it was pretty fun, not perfect, but it was watchable." I, mm. I, I watched it with a few people, and it was and I enjoyed it. So like, I was expecting like absolutely hate it. So we'll see how the third one goes. Maybe it'll be enjoyable. Maybe it won't be. Uh, I don't know, but no more of these, so yeah, I don't know. Well, like a sucker, no, it, it maybe want to watch the third one and think, you know, maybe hey, third time's a charm, maybe they'll get their shit together and it'll be a way better movie. But yeah, that that that, that pretty <laughs> much I'd say sums it up on Apocalypse is is that it, uh, it's definitely yeah. a recommend, but. Yeah. You just got to watch also, out for that midway point because to me, that's when the movie completely starts bombing. I don't think Alice bothered me quite as much as she did you, but I think that's because I just knew what to expect. So I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, it's just like, we're going ridiculous action movie stuff. I'm like, oh, all right. Mm. Oh, yeah, once but, again, designed around Alice. Right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that's just about going to do it for us on this one. So yeah, Apocalypse, that's a watch from both of us, but just be wary of Alice. But yeah, <laughs> be sure to join us next time where we take a look at Resident Evil 3. You know, I'm, ha- I'm having a pretty good time watching, you, you know, just sitting down and talking about this. How about you, Slayer? Well, I mean, like I said, the worst offense is a bland or boring movie, so as long as uh, it keeps the momentum of having entertainment value, even if it's stupid, like, sure, why not? You know, I don't I'm busy in this. Uh, All right. So, yeah, that's just about going to do it for us. So, yeah, thanks for hanging out cool. with us. Mr. Slayer, I really appreciate you. Me, and I appreciate you, too. All right. So, yeah, we'll sit down and we'll watch the third one, and let's see where they take the series next. But until next time, be good, stay safe, and take care of yourselves. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye-bye. Yeah, till next time. Till next time. <laughs>